finally got a DHM cam for the 2022 Grom, so let's get this in the bike. So at least at the time of recording, I think David at DHM is the only person making a cam for the 2022 Grom. Uh, this is advertised as making one to two horsepower over the entire rev range and having the highest lift that you can on the stock valves. This should be a pretty simple drop-in. Um, I already have the intake and uh, exhaust. You know, I think the intake, exhaust, and cam for the Groms are kind of, I don't know if you guys were into Civics and Integras back in the Fast and the Furious one days, but then it was always about intake, headers, and exhaust that you put on a car to start. I think it's the same for the Grom. It's the intake, exhaust, and the cam are the straightforward bolt-ons to make the most power. Uh, unlike the intake or exhaust or uh, just one of either, uh, once you add a cam, you really do need some type of fuel management. So either a flash ECU and DHM does flash stock ECUs, or in my case, I have the A Racer unit uh, where I can run auto tune to make sure the fueling's correct. But uh, this isn't one that you can just drop in without making some change to the ECU. And even if you're just doing intake or exhaust, I'd recommend either a flash or a standalone ECU management system for those as well. But uh, definitely once you go cam, you do need to have some type of fuel management. So uh, it should be a pretty straightforward install. I haven't done uh, any real engine work on the 2022 Grom. I guess this is hard to call this real engine work, but uh, something that requires actually getting into the internals. Okay, so here we go. These are M8 bolts holding the cover on. It was uh, pretty well retained by the rubber o-ring here, but uh, again, don't use tools. You don't want to mar up any of the aluminum. Uh, not much oil at all, so not, don't even have to worry about a mess. You also don't have to drain the oil or anything. Everything we're going to be doing is above the level that the oil's held in the engine. So the cam gear here needs to come out, but first uh, this nut needs to be pulled out and we need to... I was going to say we need to loosen the cam chain tensioner, but I do not see a cam gear tensioner. So one of the amusing things I always see on forums is somebody who went to change the oil on their Grom, but ended up backing out the cam chain tensioner bolt instead of the oil bolt and the spring comes out and they don't know how to put it back in uh, because there are typically two uh, bolts close to each other but in this case I only have a single bolt and that one's for the oil so it appears on the 22 there is no cam uh, chain tensioner bolt and I don't think that's really a problem I don't know how it's handled internally to keep uh, the chain tight up here the chain feels pretty tight uh, so we'll go ahead and just back this off and I think it'll then just take a lot of force to get the chain back on but we'll deal with that once we get there I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, pop this off To take the gear both on and off, I like to use some needle nose pliers. It's easy just to grab two of these holes here and pop it off. So gear's out and just set the chain to the side. You don't want it to get sucked back in. It's not too hard to fish it out with a tool, but it's easier if you don't have to. Uh, so this is the cam that we're replacing. Looks like it's also retained by a 10 millimeter bolt right there. All right, I realized I had the wrong part in focus there, but uh, it looks like I didn't, at least for taking it out, I didn't need to mess with the tappet covers. I didn't make any adjustments yet uh, to either of the valves, but it just took some wiggling and it did come out. So uh, I'll go ahead and leave the covers off for now in case I do need to loosen them to get it back in. But as far as removing it, I didn't need to pull them off. All right, here they are side by side. It's pretty difficult to see, but on the DHM one, this first lobe, you can tell, is a lot higher. Uh, let's see if I can get it. You can see here it's coming above the race of the bearing, whereas on this one, kind of at the same angle, it's below uh, the race of that bearing. So the lobe is definitely taller. The DHM one here in my left hand 
Uh, it doesn't have, uh, I can't remember what this is called, idle something, I'll go ahead and overlay text on the video, but uh, anyway, most of the aftermarket cams don't have this, and the DHM one here in this case doesn't either. Anyway, now that the old one's out, we can set this aside and try to pop this one in. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so no need to loosen the valves to get this out or back in. Although I will take a look and make sure that, I'm not sure if the different height of the lobes make a difference and will require me to adjust the valves. So uh, we'll get this button back up and then I will check the valves to make sure that I'm good. Before we throw the gear back on though, we need to make sure that everything is timed correctly. So we need to get the engine to top dead center so that we can align uh, this little circle with the mark on the front of the casing there. Uh, so to do that, we need to take off these two uh, little peephole covers. The bigger one here is a 10 millimeter Allen wrench. That's the biggest one I've got. This uh, top one is a six millimeter. I'm also holding the cam chain with my left hand over here just so that it doesn't get sucked back in. I'm just putting some tension on it so it can rotate around. I don't know what the official torque rating is on this, but since it's an M6 bolt going into aluminum, I'm gonna assume it's nine foot pounds. All right, so ensuring that you're still seeing the T through the little window on the engine. Again, the objective now is to get this dot lined up with this a carrot at the front of the engine. I like to use a tool like this if I'm having trouble uh, getting everything perfectly aligned, that is the chain on the right teeth. Sometimes I get it at first shot, sometimes it takes lots of attempts. This is also where it can be good to use pliers. All right, first shot and you can see I'm like three or four teeth off. Second shot is close. Let me adjust the alignment because I'm not seeing the T at the moment. That's the T and looks like I'm one tooth off. All right, so adjusting here to get the T perfect and I'm now spot on. So now the objective is to get this on without having the chain loosened enough to make it easy. Um, there's also, you can see this piece here, uh, needs to be timed with this slot on the cam. All right, and that actually wasn't too difficult. Uh, I, I felt like as I put more pressure on it, it did loosen up uh, somewhere. So there is probably some type of spring actuated cam chain tensioner somewhere that wasn't too hard for me to overcome. So uh, that didn't turn out to be a big deal. And this main cam bolt torques down to 20 foot pounds. You'll need to, on this side though, hold it with that 17 millimeter wrench so that the engine doesn't spin. And before we button everything up and celebrate how easy this was, let's double check that timing is lined up correctly. So let me spin this back to top dead center and confirm that here this dot lines up with this mark 
and that at the same time through this window you can see the T. So that all looks good. Let me get these covers on again gently on these. Um, I'm not even I'm not even going to figure out what the torque rating is. It's just barely light enough so that it doesn't back off on its own. And get this cover back on. Then let me check the valve clearance to make sure that's good to go. I'm going to use the same nine foot pound rating on these. Okay, and for the valve lash specification, I didn't see it in the owner's manual, but it is here on the side of the swing arm. This is obviously off the bike because I'm rocking the G-Craft swing arm at this point. Uh, but back to this, it shows 0 0.08 uh, millimeters for the intake, and the exhaust side is 0 0.20, both say with a 0 0.02 millimeter uh, plus or minus. I'm just feeling that uh, this probably is off because 0 0.08 millimeters and I have a 0 0.076 millimeters here and I have a 0.1 the 0.1 easily fits in here so I'm definitely gonna have to adjust this um, and the bottom one feels pretty loose although that was 0.2 millimeters which is a much thicker one let's see yeah the bottom one is also way too loose so uh, on both of these the way that you make the adjustment you back this top nut off and then this squared shape piece. There's actually a tool to make this easy that I just haven't got around to getting. Uh, so I use needle nose pliers and a wrench, uh, but you back off the locking nut and then using your feeler gauges adjust until you have just enough clearance to have this lightly touch. And then you uh, back the uh, locking nut back down and then you should be good to go. So let me go ahead and make the adjustment on the intake and the exhaust. And then we'll fire it up. It's weird that this is always a nine millimeter wrench. I think this is the only thing you use a nine millimeter wrench for. All right, so that's about the tension that I want. And then again, you should use a different tool that's designed for this, but I use pliers to hold this in place as I lock the nut down. And after I do, I double check that I still have the clearance that I was looking for. Yep, it looks good. All right, difficult to get the camera facing the other direction, but it's honestly the same thing, uh, except for on the exhaust, which is the lower part, we're looking for a 0.2 millimeter clearance instead of the 0.08 millimeter clearance we used on the top. Same nine foot-pounds on these. All right, so that really was a very simple install, just as easy as I expected it to be, which usually isn't the case with installations for me. Uh, anyway, I do plan to get some miles on the bike now, have the auto-tune, adjust the fueling, and then I plan on taking it up to Rider's Block and having uh, Mike dyno it to see how much power I'm making with the modifications that I've got on it. Still got a lot of mods planned for the bike though, so stay tuned for more videos. Thank you everybody for watching, and keep on building.